Hi gang! Here's how I made an eyeball for a Pi Camera 2, which moves using servo motors. I also designed it so that it can be adapted to any small camera. The purpose of it was to have some hardware for playing around with neural networking and AI in general. I designed it all in Blender, free 3D modeling and animation software that I use a lot. The camera is back here, attached to the back of the eyeball, and looking through it. But before even drawing the eyeball, I needed to know how big a hole to leave in front of it for the camera to look through. To do that, I use a clamp to hold a ruler in front of the camera, and measure the distance between them. 75 millimeters. I use this short Python program to capture the image. I run it from a command line. And this is the resulting image. You can see that from a distance of 75 millimeters, the camera can see 45 millimeters in either direction, or 90 millimeters altogether. Also, the photo is 720 pixels wide by 480 high, so it has a 1.5 aspect ratio. Dividing the 90 millimeter width by 1.5, we get that the field of view at 75 millimeters is 60 millimeters high. And so in Blender, I create a view screen of those dimensions, and made sure the eyeball's hole was big enough to not block the view. I also had a few design requirements. I wanted it all to fit inside a human head, without anything showing, in case I ever do that. So I designed it while checking it with a 3D model of a head at the same time. I also wanted it all up near the front of the head, leaving plenty of room in the head for other things. Another requirement was that different cameras could be used. The camera attaches to the eyeball, and the eyeball simply snaps into place on two pivot points. So changing cameras is simply a matter of designing a new eyeball. And most importantly, I wanted to make sure the motors didn't interfere with each other. And so I have one motor here, which uses a lever mechanism to pivot the eye up and down for the vertical axis. Then I have another motor down here, which rotates the whole thing horizontally. Notice that doing it doesn't affect the vertical axis. And similarly, pivoting the eye vertically doesn't affect the horizontal axis. By having two separate horizontal and vertical axes, which don't interfere with each other, the code is simpler. And I can easily calculate where the eye is pointing. Time to 3D print everything using my CR10 3D printer. Here I'm printing the eyeball. Notice that I'm using a raft to hold it down to the print bed better. And here I print the main eye structure. And here are the two pieces for the vertical movements. One for attaching to the servo horn, and the other being the connecting rod. The first time I tried assembling it all, I had a lot of fine tuning to do. The first step in assembling it is to try to attach the Pi Camera 2 to the eyeball. There are two holes on the board on either side of the lens, which I can use. For them, I've built some studs into the back of the eyeball. They're designed to compress, to fit through the holes, and then expand once through the holes, and hold the camera in place. One of them goes through fairly easily, but the other is harder. I try compressing the stud with the blunt tip of a knife. I try a little sanding in the stud's gap so that I can compress it closed more. But then I realized I'd forgotten to design in a notch in the back of the eyeball to account for some parts on the circuit board that stick out. They're in the way. So I mark where I need to do some trimming and do some careful cutting with a knife. The camera now easily snaps into place. I update the 3D model. There are two holes, one on either side of the eyeball. The main eye structure has two matching pivot points sticking out for those holes. The eyeball simply snaps into place. It pivots easily up and down. I next do a little cleanup for the holes for the 2-56 machine screws, and the screws fit just fine. But I find some more design flaws. The hole for the screws for attaching the structure to the servo motor horn are too small. The same issue exists for the same holes for attaching the arm to the other servo motor horn. So I change those in the 3D model. I also notice that the wire here is touching the structure, so I fix that in the 3D model too. I drill out the holes that were too small and assemble what I have so far to look for more design flaws. One obvious flaw is that the servo for rotating the eye vertically needs more support. Though part of the problem is that this vertical piece, which is meant to hold that servo in place, is too weak. So in a 3D model, I widen underneath the servo and widen the piece that was too weak at the same time. I also create a top piece that I'll glue on. And I reprint the parts. I use super glue to glue on the new top piece. Before I can assemble it all, I need to zero the servo motor positions. I'm using Tower Pro SG90 servo motors. The first step is actually to position the servos so that when they're at their halfway position, the horns will be oriented like this. And to do that, I need some control hardware. I'm using a Micro Maestro motor control board from Pololu, connected up to a Raspberry Pi through a level shifter board. I have a separate video all about that setup, so I won't go into more detail. 
However, I find by doing some testing that I'm not getting the full 180 degrees of movement. After further testing, I change the minimum and maximum positions for the servos and the Maestro board's firmware using the Polarloop Maestro Control Center. Only after that am I able to get the full 180 degrees. And here's the Python code I use for positioning the servos to their halfway position. I'm using a Maestro library which I wrote and which I talk about in that other video. Here's where I set the minimum and maximum positions to the same as the firmware. This is where I calculate the halfway position. And here's where I tell the motors to move there. I run the code. And the motors rotate to their halfway positions. Then I orient the horns like this. That'll cause the eyeball to look straight ahead when both motors are at their halfway positions. Finally, I can assemble the finished version. I use two screws to attach the main eye structure to one of the servo horns. Then I put the other servo in place. It's a very tight fit, but I get it eventually. Then I use a 3 quarter inch long number 2-56 bolt and nut to secure it. After that comes a servo horn attachment, which I again attach using two screws. As I already showed, I mount the Pi camera to the back of the eyeball. And now I slide it into the two pivot points on the main structure. Then I put a half inch long bolt onto the servo horn attachment. I use a drill to very, very gently open the hole on the eyeball's lever arm some more. Then I fix another bolt to the eyeball's lever arm. I slide on the connecting rod. And use nuts tightened against each other to keep the connecting rod in place while allowing the bolts to rotate freely in its holes. And that's the complete Pi Camera eyeball structure done. I can rotate it horizontally and vertically. Once again, to drive it all, I'm using my Raspberry Pi, Maestro Motor Controller Board, and Level Shifter Setup. To mount the eyeball structure to all that temporarily, I've 3D printed this base piece. I plug the horizontal servo into the Maestro's first servo position, channel 0, and the vertical servo into the second position. I wrote up some simple test code which moves the eyeball around, and here it is in action. And here it's running code that I wrote which emulates some of the neurons in the back of the human eye and in the brain in order to fixate on changes in its field of view. I'll put a link in the video description when I have something uploaded somewhere about it. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more neat making videos. You can also support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!